Hi, welcome to a new episode of History in 7 Facts, the show that aims to explore some interesting episodes of humanity's past. Check out this playlist to watch the entire series and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Nowadays, the sinking of the ship Lusitania is no longer a very known subject, but back in the days it was a very important episode in European history. The sinking of Lusitania in 1915 brought about a change in attitude in America towards the First World War. It was a debated subject and a topic of conspiracy theories, as no one could understand how a single torpedo could have sank the largest cargo and passenger ship of the time in just 18 minutes. On May 7, 1915, the RMS Lusitania was just 16 kilometers off the coast of Ireland, on its way to Liverpool. At the time, Europe was already set ablaze in a massive war like no other that was spiraling out of control. Both Great Britain and Germany had set arbitrary war zones within which any enemy ship, military or otherwise, could be attacked without warning. But on board the Lusitania, the atmosphere was relaxed and the passengers were at the end of their transatlantic journey. No one expected that the giant ship could be attacked by the Germans. They were, however, warned by the German embassy. The notice stated the war zones included the waters adjacent to the British Isles. Any enemy ship in those areas was liable to destruction and travelers sailing on those ships do so at their own risk. Still, no one expected to see any action. The first sign of trouble, though, appeared in the form of bubbles rapidly approaching the ship. Seconds later, a terrible explosion had shaken the ship. A large wave swept the decks and one of the lifeboats was torn away. It was the beginning of the end for the Lusitania. In just minutes, the ship was already leaning towards its starboard. The cold waters rushed in at a rate of 800 tons per minute. Panic and desperation engulfed everyone. On the port side of the ship, the lifeboats couldn't be released because they were sliding inwards. On the starboard, the boats were hanging outside and couldn't be reached. Those that did manage to reach the sea were dragged under the ship that was still moving at speed. Some boats came loose while still on the ship and crushed those beneath when they fell. The chaos was total. Hundreds and hundreds of people realized that the ship was sinking and it was sinking way too fast for anyone to survive. While the Lusitania was sinking, another explosion occurred, according to eyewitnesses. The ship was now rapidly going underwater and just 18 minutes after the attack, it was gone. Those that survived had to helplessly watch the agony as the terrible screams of desperation slowly faded away. One of the survivors, Margaret Guire, was sucked into a chimney while the ship went under, then thrown back up, covered in oil and soot. Amazingly, she survived. Most didn't. Out of 1,257 passengers, 785 died. Out of 702 crew members, 413 didn't survive. The bodies of 100 and children were floating around the lifeboat. While all of this was happening on the Lusitania, Lieutenant Captain Walter Schwieger, the captain of the German submarine, was already heading home. Little did he know that he will live out the rest of his short life in infamy. Among the dead, there were 128 American citizens. This caused shock and revolt on the streets of New York. But most of the passengers were Irish, and although only one third of the bodies were ever recovered, the hearses of Queenstown were working non-stop. The newspapers of the time talked harshly about Walter Schwieger and the Germans, but the truth is that he couldn't have anticipated the extreme loss of life. A ship like Lusitania usually takes hours or even days to sink. The idea was to disable the ship, not to kill the thousands. Furthermore, the Lusitania was very close to the Irish coast and there were 48 lifeboats aboard. 
However, normally, according to the conventions of the time, cargo and passenger ships were not supposed to be attacked. Plus, the captain of the attacking ship was supposed to warn the enemy crew, giving them time to abandon the ship. But these conventions were made in 1899 and 1907, before submarine warfare was a thing. If a submarine would contact the enemy ship to warn them, they would expose themselves, and the same conventions allowed commercial vessels to be armed, so the submarine could have easily find itself under attack. The imperial authorities of Germany were harshly condemned by the international community. But the British authorities also had their part in the tragedy, although they kept quiet about it. The Admiralty ordered all commercial vessels to make use of their cannons if they encountered German submarines. The Germans knew about these orders, so Walter Schwieger's attack on the Lusitania was indeed a preemptive strike. His sub could have easily been destroyed by a giant ship like the Lusitania. The man was not a bloodthirsty soldier. In fact, earlier, he allowed the crew of a schooner to abandon their ship, as per international law. Nevertheless, the sinking of Lusitania was great news around the world and a subject of debate. The Germans justified their actions by saying that the ship was carrying large amounts of ammunition. 4,200 boxes of rifle ammo, 1,250 boxes of shrapnel and 18 percussion warheads. This cargo wouldn't explode in case of an attack, but it would have been vital on the battlefront. But the Germans also suspected that the Lusitania carried some illegal, more powerful ammunition. Back then, it was presumed that on board the ship there was an undeclared and illegal cargo of nitrocellulose, an extremely volatile explosive. It was thought that this was the cargo that caused the second explosion. If this was true, then the British government and Connard Line, the company that owned Lusitania, knowingly endangered its civilian passengers. But in 1993, the shipwreck was examined and there was no trace of nitrocellulose in the cargo bay. Furthermore, the hull of the ship didn't look like it took damage from an internal explosion. It did, however, shed some light on why the RMS Lusitania sank so quickly. By chance, the torpedo hit the ship in its most vulnerable point, right behind the main protection wall that compartmentalizes the ship's hold. The water that rushed in put a huge amount of pressure on the remaining walls that eventually buckled and ripped open, thus flooding one compartment after the other. As unlikely as it seems, that one torpedo was enough to sink the Lusitania in 18 minutes. The terrible loss of life that followed was also the result of poor preparing on behalf of the captain of the ship, William Turner. Some lifeboats were firmly fixed on the deck so they wouldn't wobble, but this also meant that they were virtually impossible to set free during an emergency. The emergency instructions were also ignored to avoid creating panic. Because of this, many of the passengers ended up putting on their life vests the other way around, and when they fell in the water, those vests kept their heads under water and drowned them. In addition, the captain presumed that in case of an attack, the Lusitania would sink slowly and an ordered evacuation would be possible. As a result, the portholes of the ship were not closed and water rushed in through the windows too. He also ignored a telegram from the Admiralty warning him of German presence in those waters. Because of this, William Turner was suspected of actually being a German spy, or that he followed the orders of the British Admiralty and let the Lusitania sink in order to attract the USA into the war. The last telegram that reached Turner came before noon, warning of German submarines in the Irish Channel. He received orders to follow a zigzag course if he spots any submarines. But Turner was no Navy officer, he was a commercial vessel captain with zero combat experience. He didn't follow a zigzag course because he interpreted the message as to turn around in case he sees danger. So the Lusitania was traveling in a straight line when it was spotted by the Germans, who then opened fire as per their own orders. 
at the time and for generations to come, it was hard to believe that such a large ship was brought down by a single torpedo. Many thought that a second torpedo was the cause of the second explosion, or the illegal ammunition, or something. But here's roughly how it actually happened. The torpedo opened up a 6 by 3 meter wide hole on the starboard side. The impact loosened some rivets and a wave that rushed in further damaged the area. The ship was now leaning on the starboard side, which put even more pressure on the rivets and steel plates. In just seconds, that 3x6 hole turned into a 1000 square meter wide hole. Electricity was no longer available and thus the engines couldn't be stopped. The movement of the ship further aggravates the situation. 800 tons of water flood the Lusitania per minute. Just 7 minutes later, the entire ship now leans towards its starboard side. The open portholes are now in the water and contribute to the fast sinking of the ship. Since the electricity is offline, the hydraulic doors that could seal some compartments cannot be closed. 15 minutes after the attack, the ship is still taking in a lot of water. The compartment walls are under a huge pressure. They buckle and rip with a loud noise, causing people to believe that a second explosion occurred. The water on the starboard side caused the ship to lift its back end, which causes the hole to enlarge even further. From this moment, it takes less than 3 minutes for the 31,000 ton ship to disappear underwater. Many considered and indeed consider to this day that the sinking of Lusitania determined the United States to enter World War I. And while indeed it caused a shift in the public's perception, who were now leaning towards a pro-war side, the Lusitania didn't actually cause America's entry into the Great War. In fact, it wasn't the Lusitania, nor was it the will to help Britain, it was self-preservation. America entered the war in April 1917, out of fear of a Mexican invasion of its southern state. In March that year, the newspapers published a telegram sent by the German minister Arthur Zimmermann to his ambassador in Washington. In it, he noted an all-out restriction-free submarine war. But though disturbing, this wasn't what shocked the nation. Zimmermann wanted an alliance with Mexico and Japan, and in case of a victory, the United Mexican States would receive Texas, New Mexico and Arizona. The Germans wanted the Americans to be held in place, fighting at their own borders, and avoid their implication in the European theatre. But Zimmermann had no idea that the British managed to penetrate the transatlantic telegraph wires and were able to listen in. They sent the coded message to Washington, who immediately reacted. Incredibly, Zimmerman did not deny he sent the telegraph, even though there were many skeptics in Washington. Thus, Woodrow Wilson, the American president, had no choice and accepted the hostile challenge, and World War I truly became a world war. Thank you for watching this episode of 7 Facts. I hope this was interesting and informative, and maybe it even inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you like this video, please, thumbs up and subscribe. While you're downstairs, let me know what you think about this video. Please consider visiting my Patreon page and become a patron, the link is in the description. I hope to see you next time, bye.